This time on The Gadget Show. Prepare to attack! We're riding. This thing is awesome. Tracking. Spying. Exploding. Yes! And doing plenty of running away and hiding. <laughs> it's our scariest wild challenge yet. <laughs> Can tech help save us from the clutches of a crack squad of ex-Marines and military police? There's fast gadge. Noisy gadge. And a whole load of very, very clever gadge. <laughs> But can it save our skins? Ah, ooh. Also, Otis meets up with Radio 1 DJ and music aficionado Joe Wiley for a shakedown of the latest music streaming sites. My legs are guitar! What the hell are you doing? I have no idea! <laughs> and I get all hot and steamy testing our top five kettles. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Welcome to The Gadget Show. Yeah, and you joined us at just the right time, the beginning of the show. <laughs> this week, all of us, that's John, myself, Susie and Jason, faced a rather scary and daunting challenge in the great outdoors. Yes, another infamous Gadget Show wild challenge. Now, I love the outdoors and I'm quite partial to the odd wild challenge now and again. But when I heard what this one entailed, I was tempted to hang up my walking boots and pull a sickie. <laughs> Basically, we were going to be hunted. Hunted like dogs. Pursued by... Well, I can't actually tell you who we were going to be pursued by, because at the time we didn't know, did we? But we had an inkling it would be kind of very manly, you know, dog-like people. Man-dogs. The aim was to see which of us could choose the best tech to evade capture from dawn till dusk. And we were allowed to choose our gadgets before we set off. Yeah, it was one of those challenges that was going to sort the wheat from the chaff, you know, the men from the boys. Thank you. Uh, why look at us when you say boys? Hmm? Uh, <laughs> it's because you think you're a man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more a man than you'll ever be. What? We were all bundled into a truck at the crack of dawn and driven into the wilderness. We'd all chosen to bring with us the sort of tech that we'd hoped would give us the edge in our wild challenge. Am I the only one here that's nervous about this wild challenge? Because, I mean, wild challenges at the best of times are like a challenge for survival, aren't they? And now we're going to be hunted as well. But they haven't actually told us who's going to be doing the hunting. We've stopped. Our hunter turned out to be gadget show veteran Mike Hawke, an ex-Special Forces survival expert with over 20 years of the toughest military experience under his belt. If he's hunting us, we're dead meat. Oh, there are four of us. Team Gadget. Who? Good morning. Your challenge today is that you're going to be hunting. I think you ought to know I'm the man <laughs> doing the hunting. Right. So we knew who would be hunting us. The tech really needed to be up to scratch this time. Now. All you gotta do is evade capture until sundown. Not only that, but Mike had brought a crack squad of X-Forces hard men with him to track us down. I'm gonna give y'all a little bit of a head start. So if I were you, I would get going quick, fast, and in a hurry. Where's your life? We all ran in different directions, and we all had different strategies, using the gadgets we've been allowed to pre-select to help us. Armed with detailed maps of the area, Mike organised his team into radio-linked units. Then, after giving us a short head start, he let them loose to hunt us down. Within the 200-acre paintball site, complete with dense, overgrown woodland, muddy trenches and abandoned shacks, our goal was, with the help of our tech, to evade capture until nightfall. I was heading north at full pelt. To be honest with you, I don't even know why I'm running, because I've got a plan. I've had a couple of personal transport gadgets stashed in these woods. How am I going to find them? Using a geocaching application for my iPhone. Geocaching is basically like geek treasure hunting. The idea of geocaching is to hide goodies and post their location online. Then other players can seek them out. To find geocaches, you can use GPS or an app like mine, which searches for any caches close to your location. Aha! Come to Daddy! My app showed not only the location of my nearest cache, but also a compass to direct me to it. All I had to do now was find the gadget treasure before my hunters found me. I reckon the best form of defence was to attack, and I had a plan. I headed straight for an abandoned fort where I had a stash of tech waiting for me. Look, I know these guys are pros, they're going to get here eventually, but I'm thinking if I can physically keep them away from me for as long as possible, that will be a victory on my part, so I've got a great pile of gadgets. I wanted to distract my enemy, and I reckon the best way to do that was with paintball gadgets. I'm just trying to cover my M80s. These are pressure-sensitive paintballing booby traps. 
essentially there's a little uh, CO2 canister inside and if someone steps on it, it shoots up a load of paint and I'm going to put two or three along here to try and put him off the trail. I'd also got some sound flash grenades attached to a cunning tripwire. Kit like this can be bought by civvies, but it's so sophisticated, it's also used in military training. And the most malevolent bit of my ambush was a piece of genuine military hardware, the long-range acoustic device, or LRAD. It's an acoustic hailing device, and usually you'd see it off the coast of Somalia. It's an anti-piracy device, but in a small enclosed area like this, it emits a really loud shrill that's really disorientating to the enemy. So all I have to do now is wait here and wait to see him. I, too, had come across a deserted camp. OK, well, this looks like a good place to hide. But unlike Susie, I had no intention of confronting the enemy. I wanted to make sure they never even saw me. Now, what I'm going to be using are some home security gadgets to keep my perimeter safe that way. When the bad guys come to get me, I've got plenty of warning. Have a look at this. It's a mini wireless security camera. It works off a 9-volt battery. I'm going to place these around my perimeter. My tiny security cameras claim to transmit their picture up to 60 metres, so they're perfect for home security. They work in conjunction with a portable wireless monitor. The great thing about these is they're that small. You probably wouldn't notice them unless you were looking for them. Unlike that lot, I hadn't gone far yet. But if everything went to plan, I wouldn't have to exert myself at all. Now, to be honest, I can still just see the place where we were all dropped off. But I've got a very simple plan that just involves this, a smartphone. I reckon I've got all the technology I need to evade capture in this single handset. You see, the sort of tech we now all take for granted in our phones, we the stuff of dreams for spies and special forces just a decade or two ago. I'm going to start by calling for reinforcements. I got hold of a free Android application which uses GPS to plot your position and finds the nearest taxi service to where you are at any given time. Ooh, I don't want a limo. I think that'd be far too conspicuous under the circumstances. Four Oaks cars, that sounds better. Now, there's also maps built into the application so I can find the nearest road. Right, let's call them. Yes, I'd, I'd like a taxi at Coppice Lane. See you there. How long? Five minutes. Ooh, heard that one before. But I wasn't out of the woods yet. Of course, I don't need to go blundering around at random because the GPS on this HTC Hero is really accurate and responsive. And I can navigate my way through the trees using the built-in Google Maps application, then skirt round the edge of the wood, hoping to keep out of sight as I make my way to the road. I'd have to navigate quickly. Mike's troops were closing in. We were still hours away from sundown, and things were about to get a lot harder. Taxi for Bentley? Yeah, John, was that not cheating? <laughs> I call it initiative, actually. <laughs> and isn't it amazing how good smartphones have become at telling you where you are? The way the GPS interacts with the locations where you get lovely yes, detailed John, maps, pictures of where you amazing. are. It's amazing, but tell you what, though, I was absolutely terrified waiting for them to close in, knowing they were somewhere yeah. in those woods. Yeah, but like being a sitting duck, even though I had my perimeter safely marked out, waiting for them to trip the alarms, it was really It was daunting. tense. Yeah. Yeah. But the question is, will any of us make it to sundown, or will we ultimately all four of us be captured, interrogated, and hopefully just a little bit mildly tortured. <laughs> Later on, we'll see how our tech protected us as we were mercilessly tracked down and hunted by our dogged pursuers. Woo -woo! Otis checks out the latest music streaming sites with uber cool rock chick Joe Wiley. And Susie gets so steamy that there's a danger we'll all boil over. Yep, yeah, OK, she's testing techie kettles. You can't say fairer than that. back. Now, I'd like to talk about buying music. Most of us these days use digital music download services like the ubiquitous iTunes. You buy, you download, you keep. But all that is changing with music streaming. Instead of paying to download and keep your songs, you pay for a service that streams music live over the internet and gives you access to a massive library of tracks, bigger than that which you could ever hope to amass at home without paying a small fortune. It's an idea that's catching on fast and could soon eclipse iTunes. But which is the best music streaming service? Well, to find out, I hooked up with a friend of mine who knows a thing or two about music. 
When it comes to music, there are few better informed than Top Radio 1 DJ Joe Wiley. And I wanted her opinion on three of the top music streaming services, Spotify, Napster and Sky Songs. The idea that you can just sit there in your office or at your home on your computer all the time and have all this music at your disposal, it's just brilliant, really, really exciting prospect. Yeah, I mean, you can even uh, become a, a DJ at your own house party. Yeah, yeah but that's not so good, <laughs> that does me out of a job. First, we loaded up Spotify which allows you to stream unlimited music on either a daily or monthly tariff. I think it looks really cool. It's not dissimilar to iTunes. It's kind of black and grey, nice kind of blue thrown in there as well. Spotify currently has about 7 million songs available and they claim to be adding 10,000 new editions per day. But I do know there are some notable omissions. There's no ACDC, Pink Floyd, The Beatles, um, Metallica, Oasis, which, you know, they're, they're kind of glaring omissions. And also it can take a, a while for them to upload new tracks. With Spotify, songs are shared across peer-to-peer -peer servers. These allow you to get different parts of each track from a shared web network that your computer reassembles instantly. It also means you experience no buffering, which is the time delay normally taken when you stream from a single server. Oh, that's good because it's so irritating if you have to sit and <laughs> wait for it to buffer all the time. Yeah. You can also create playlists, then share them with friends via email or social networking sites. As a DJ, obviously, I absolutely love this. I just spend far too much time just <laughs> making stupid playlists and kind of doing it for people. Yeah. So I love this. And if you want to enjoy Spotify on the move, you can using the free iPhone or Android mobile app. So you can think of all your songs and then you can listen to them when you're on the go. That's right. And there's also an offline mode, which means you can cache your music and listen to it, even if you've got no phone connectivity or Wi-Fi connection. I'm liking this more and more. <laughs> so, Spotify had impressed Joe, but how would Napster's service compare? It has three subscription tariffs to choose from, but unlike Spotify, they throw in some free download credits too. It's not very sexy, is it? No. I mean, it's kind of old school Napster. It's, yeah. it's kind of very grey, kind of that pale grey colour. Looking for the track, it's now buffering. OK, so now it's playing, but that was around No, that's seconds. rubbish, that's rubbish. I would, I'd be off making a cup of tea, get some toast, <laughs> and then I'd be on to another site, because I would have forgotten what I was looking for. So Joe and I didn't rate its looks, but on the plus side, it offers a whopping 8 million tracks, including some that Spotify doesn't. But when we came to play a song, we found buffering time was just uh, too long. However, we soon woke up when we saw the fantastic choice on the preloaded playlist. Now, this is brilliant. This is really good. Look, um, detox, that's pretty good. Dinner uh, party. <laughs> kids, mm. lunch break. Late night. Excellent. Oh, Joe, look what I found. Air guitar. Are you partial to a bit of air guitar, just, is this? Just a bit. I thought you might be somehow. OK, so we wait. Which is annoying. Well, you know. I think boys will get more impatient with this. I though. think so. <laughs> Oh my God. Dude, dude, what the hell are you doing? I have no idea. <laughs> the last of our three services is the six-month-old Sky Songs, which, like Napster, throws in some download credits in addition to the unlimited streaming. I really like it. It's very clean and it's very clear. It's mm -hmm. very easy to see where to go and what to do. So there's some really neat things here. Look, I like this one. Um, if you click on the heart uh, alongside an artist, then that gets added to your favourite straight away. So uh, I, I heart Owl City. <laughs> I like that. All right, well, it's playing, though. That is half the time of Napster. Yep. Not as instant as Spotify, but half the time of Napster. So, in terms of looks and usability, Spotify and Sky Songs were jostling for supremacy, with Napster bringing up the rear. But how did they compare in terms of sound quality? Well, that's where Joe's expertise came in. I had lined up an identical selection of tracks on each of the three services for Joe to listen to using identical equipment. She had no idea which service was which, but I kicked off with Napster. Right. Ready? What you're hearing is the same sound that Joe is listening to on her headphones. OK, Joe, that was... Service number one. Um, that was really warm and lush, and the music sounded great. It sounded really good. Um, no hiss, no compression whatsoever. So yeah, I like that one. That's okay. good. Next, we moved on to Spotify. Okay, what did you make of the second one? Um, 
Um, this one was, it was very clear, actually. Yeah. It was very, very, you know, the, the sound was very clear, very... But, but it was cold. I didn't like that. Okay. I kind of like warmth when it comes to my music. So it was clear and it was powerful, but it was very clinical. Okay. And not so good. And the final service was Sky Songs. OK, Joe. That was the last one. What did you make of that? Um, that was weaker. That was definitely um, my least favourite of the three. Just kind of, I think there'd been quite a lot of compression on that one, so it okay. just kind of wasn't very moving, really. So to the G ratings, and it's three Gs for Sky Songs. We love the interface and features, but poor sound quality let it down. Napster gets four Gs. It's a bit slow, but the number of songs, range of playlists, and superior sound quality is impressive. And Spotify also gets four Gs. It's easy to navigate, can be used on the move, and the sound quality is pretty good too. Gadget Show Live, our live exhibition, takes place this April at the NEC in Birmingham. Now, the original four days of the show are totally sold out, but if you've been slow getting tickets, all is not lost, because the exhibition will now open to the public for a special preview afternoon on the 7th of April. For details, go to our website, www.5.tv slash gadget show, and click on the tab marked Gadget Show Live. See you there. Right, now it's time for this week's top five. And get ready because it promises to get hot and steamy. What are you on about? It's not hot and steamy. Well, it is hot and steamy, because it's, it's the top five kettles, but not in that way. You're better than that. Stop it. Oh, come here, then. <laughs> I'd sourced a selection of the latest kettles on the market to test out, from ones with elaborate LED displays to techie models with temperature controls. I was ready to get hot under the collar in the name of gadget testing. On average, us Brits boil the kettle four times a day. Now that, my friends, is a lot of boiling. So, what you want is a kettle that boils quickly, that's energy efficient, and also, obviously, it's got to look good. So, I set to work, and my first test was a crucial one. Speed of boiling. How long it took each kettle to boil one litre of water? Three minutes and eight seconds. And then to boil just one cup. 38 seconds for a cup. I also tested the overboil of each kettle. In other words, how long after boiling the auto cutoff kicks in. Come on. Go on. If the kettle carries on heating needlessly after the water's boiled, it not only fills the kitchen with steam, it also wastes electricity. Plus, I was listening out for noise issues. It's going to take off. We start to get this crescendo as it starts to boil. And monitoring energy consumption, as well as checking out some of the more innovative features. This Bugatti Vera kettle has got this gorgeous little control panel which is embedded in the handle and it allows you to change the temperature. So, for example, if you're having a herbal tea, you might not want it to be as hot as, I don't know, a cup of coffee. After eliminating the slower to boil models, I was down to 10 and looked at the other factors like ease of use and, of course, those all important looks to finally reach my top five. At number five, it's the DeLonghi Icona. It boiled a litre of water in a very respectable 2 minutes 25 seconds with a 9 second overboil and a reasonable power consumption. Just look at it. It's high design but in a good way. I think it's absolutely beautiful. At number four, it's the Eco3 Electronic. In my test, it boiled in a respectable 2 minutes 30, had one of the quickest overboil cutoffs and the lowest power consumption of our top five. It also had a rather clever water saving design. It's got a really useful temperature gauge, but what I love about this are the compartments, so you only boil the water that you need to. So by pushing down on the top, you can transfer the required amount of water from the main reservoir into the boiling chamber. Nice. At number three, it's the Tefal Quick Cup Deluxe. This heats your water just one cup at a time, and in our test, it did so in only 26 seconds. If you're from a big family, then this might not be your cup of tea, but if you're not, and you're demanding, like I am, about your tea, when you want a cup, you want it now. This thing delivers in under 30 seconds, and you can't say fairer than that. Number two, it's the Julep Dome. It was our fastest to boil a litre with a time of just two minutes with a 12 second overboil. This kettle is so lightweight, it's lovely to use. It's got a boil dry protection system, but most of all, its classic looks are just gorgeous. And my number one kettle is the Magi Mix. 
It was a solid overall performer, boiling a litre in 2 minutes 27 seconds, with a 10-second overball and a quiet efficiency. You got me. I've fallen for its gadgetiness. I love its illuminated display, its pop-up lid, so you don't burn your hands. But most of all, as a kettle, I think it's the perfect all-rounder. Hey, you're with me, though, aren't you, on the importance of a good kettle? Absolutely, Suze. In fact, mm. we're about to go for a break, so why don't you put the kettle on, Suze? Yeah, I would, but I don't think it'll suit me. Well, hey! <laughs> I like that. After the break, our wild challenge continues as all four of us attempt to avoid getting captured by a gang of dead hard military trackers. There we'll be chasing, screaming, ah! Ah! and Otis dressed as a small rhododendron. Otis! <laughs> Welcome back to the taut psychological drama that is this week's Wild Challenge. Now, you'll remember, we'd been dumped in a very large snowy wood and we'd been given the challenge using gadgets to avoid being captured by ex-Special Forces hard men. We had until sundown to avoid being taken prisoner by these ex-Army butch manly types dressed in camouflage and we'd each adopted a different method to stay at large. Here's a recap, Jason first. I'd gone for personal transport gadgets designed to evade capture by the meaty man people that were on my tail. <laughs> Next, Susie. I thought that the best form of defence was actually attack. So I barricaded myself into a stronghold and armed myself to the back teeth with gadgety gun type things. Next, me. Shh, someone's coming. So I decided to hide way, way away from the danger zone and <laughs> I kept my perimeter safe by using home security tech. <laughs> And I decided that all the tech I needed was contained in this. A smartphone I was fully connected with, GPS, and all sorts of stuff that this lot could only dream of. Yeah, that's right, John. You'd used your phone to ring a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit of common sense and gadget know-how, Susie. OK, so here we go, then. John is waiting for a taxi. Otis is in a bush. Jason is sort of looking for some personal transport oh, yeah. somewhere. And I'm preparing for Armageddon. Back in the wilderness, Mike's team were hot on our heels and we were each hoping our tech strategies would pay off and keep us from their clutches. Using my geocaching app, I'd come within spitting distance of my gadgets. There, there, there it is. <laughs> Usually, you'd have to leave a new treasure for the next geocacher to find, but that could wait until tomorrow. I had to move and quick. One of Mike's boys had found me. But my plan had always been to outrun the enemy. And with the Electro Skate All Track powered off road skateboard, that's exactly what I intended to do. The All Track can go from 0 to 25 in four seconds. That's faster than Usain Bolt. So I had a chance against this guy. This thing is awesome. Woohoo! It's controlled by this wireless Bluetooth device in my hand. It's got forward and reverse. And they reckon the battery is good enough for 25 miles. My plan was working like a dream. On my off-road board, I was uncatchable. Meanwhile, my plan of using a GPS-enabled smartphone was going swimmingly. Or it would have been if my taxi hadn't pulled up closer to one of Mike's men than to me. And he rightly suspected it could be a getaway car. He brought a GPS tracker, which would feed the car's position back to virtual maps on Mike's computer every 15 seconds, leaving the soldier free to hunt me on foot. I finally made it to the car, with the full intention of driving straight to the nearest cosy pub. Usually, planting a tracking device on someone without their knowledge is illegal. But as I was in on the challenge, Mike was clear to track me at leisure. Bravo 2, this is Hotel Zero. Be advised your target is moving west. Track your target, over. My plan was falling apart and I was blissfully unaware. No, they haven't, they haven't a clue where we are now. Although my all track had been flying along the trail, I was about to find out it had its shortcomings. Mike had sent another soldier to head me off. I tried to swerve into the wood, but the all track just couldn't cope with the slippery leaves. Oh, no! I was forced to abandon the deck and make a run for it. I've just got to reach my next gadget before I get caught! <sighs> All was quiet on my security cameras, but I was getting nervous. Just in case they do get too close, I've got something super stealthy. And dare I say it, a little bit sexy. Check these out. 
This ghillie suit is the ultimate camouflage. Weighing under half a kilo and covered in realistic nylon oak leaves, it's just the job for wildlife photographers, hunters and super stealthy television presenters. I was out in the open. I'd been spotted, but I was about to hit Mike Soldier with an unbearable beam of sound from my long-range acoustic device. It wasn't at top volume, but it was enough to send my would-be captor scuttling away. Susie won. That boy's nil. I'd managed to shake off my pursuer for now, and fortunately I knew the gadget team had geocached another transport treasure for me somewhere. It should be just around this corner. Check it out. Oh. It was a brand new Cannondale Trail SL3, an ideal mountain bike for cross country trails. With no rear suspension, it's lighter than many, and this also gives it greater efficiency on the flatter ground. Mountain bike designers come along such a long way, and an expensive bike like this comes with an aluminium frame, decent shocks, gnarly tyres, and disc brakes, which is exactly what you need for a dangerous and slippery environment like that. Ah, here we are. Good. As planned, my taxi had dropped me off to a local hostelry for a very pleasant cup of tea. However, I was totally unaware that the tracking device on the taxi meant that Mike knew exactly where I was. Bravo 2, this is Hotel Zero. Be advised, your target is stuck at a pub off of Slade Road. Take down your target, over. You're coming with me, son. Oh. That was one down. With one confirmed capture, Mike made the signal that let us all know that Team Gadget... I know, sounds like they've got one of the others. ...were down to three. Bravo 2, over. Suspect is making his way due north. Roger, Alpha 1, on my way. I was getting wary of my visibility on the open trail, but I knew this bike could handle rough ground with ease, so I headed deeper into the woods. And that was a critical error. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Hang on a minute. No! No! With no room for evasive action, I was done for. No! Ah! That's two down, two to go. Oh, did the naughty men catch you playing a bike in the woods, Jason? <laughs> yeah, they did. It was, it was weird. That guy was rotund and he was elderly, and yet he was always in front of me. It was, it was freaky. It was good. At least he didn't get caught having a burger in a pub. Yes, John. I was very comfortable in there. They had a lovely <laughs> fire going. And then I was dragged off into those ghastly, muddy woods again. It's absolutely not how I'd planned it. However, that tracking device, I have to say, that was pretty cunning. I had no yeah, idea yeah, that yeah, was there. No idea. Yeah. Mm. So, just Susie and I left. But which one of us would make it? Would we get captured? like Jason and John, or would we manage to evade capture until sunset? Yes, you will find out very shortly. But first, it's time for this week's competition. Yeah, and in this week's competition, we've decided to give at least two of you an opportunity to get away from what has been a pretty dismal winter weather-wise and to send a couple of you to sunnier climbs. Yes, in this week's competition, we are giving away a week's holiday for two in Abu Dhabi, including the flights. But that is only the luxurious tip of our iceberg of gadge because we're also going to throw in pretty much every bit of tech we use in this week's our challenge. And that's still not all, because we're also throwing in virtually every bit of tech we think you could possibly need to kit out your home. Yes, this is a life-changing experience, so sit up straight and get very excited, for you could be the one to win all these prizes that are about to appear upon your screen. You can win a week's holiday for two in Abu Dhabi, including flights at what's reputed to be the most expensive hotel ever built, the Emirates Palace. An HTC Hero mobile phone, a Cab For Me app, a GroundSpeak geocaching app, a magnetic tracker. A mini spy camera and wireless receiver kit, an Optex audio warning device, a Jack Pike ghillie suit, a vocalist sniffer infrared detector, an all-track skateboard, a Cannondale trail bike, an automatic Tommy 20, a rubber band rifle, a belt blaster, a super soaker, a 50-inch plasma TV, a 40-inch LCD TV, a 32-inch LCD TV, a Blu-ray player and 15 Blu-ray movies. A Panasonic compact digital camera, a high-end gaming PC, a MacBook laptop and a Canon Pixmar printer. A TomTom Tom Go live sat nav, a B&W Zeppelin mini iPod dock, a Wii, a Wii Fit and a DSi. An Xbox 360, a PS3, a PSP Go, a Power Mac gaming chair and games for all the consoles. An iPhone, a 5.1 surround sound speaker system. An LG Watch phone, an iPod Touch, an Arcos 5, a Panasonic high-def camcorder. A flip video all 
Ultra HD, a Rovio mobile webcam, a bulletproof USB memory stick, an Oral-B electric toothbrush and a Slingbox Pro. A Surefire E1 backup torch, a Marin mountain bike, a Brompton folding bike, a Roberts Ecologic 2 dab radio and a pair of Burgas walking boots. A Gorilla Pod, a Magimix food processor. A Yogi Gatekeeper Pico, a Griffin Bluetooth headset. A Cobb Barbecue, an Aladdin Challenger flask, a pair of Denon headphones and an Apple TV. A copy of Windows 7, a copy of FX Home Special Effects software and a Dyson Ball vacuum cleaner. A D-Link Wi-Fi router, an Amazon Kindle e-reader and a Samsung NC10 netbook. All that plus four tickets to Gadget Show Live at the NEC in Birmingham this April and a limo to take you all the way from your front door to the show and back. It's a prize fund worth in excess of £19,000. And to win with the chance of winning the lot, you'll need to know the answer to this question. Which movie legend starred in the 1963 film The Great Escape? Was it A, Stephen McQueen, B, Stephen Hawking, or C, Steven Spielberg? To enter, call 0904 1616 5 or text A, B or C to 6355. Or send your answer, name and contact telephone number on the back of a postcard or sealed envelope. To Gadget Show 4, PO Box 46556, London M10 WW. Calls cost £1.50 from a BT landline. Calls from other networks may vary and from mobiles will cost considerably more. Text costs £1.50 plus one message at standard network rate. For rules, go to 5.tv slash win. Lines close at midday on Monday the 1st of March and three days later for postal entries. Of course, we'll show the question again at the end of the show. Good luck. It's time now for something a bit different. Something we call speed gadging. Yeah, imagine a cross between Dragon's Den, uh, speed dating down some dodgy social club, the gadget show and us two stunners. Yeah, or you can just ignore all that and watch this. So, here's how it works. Jason and Susie have each picked a new gadget that they think is brilliant. And in true speed dating style, they've got just a minute to convince each of these <laughs> lovely people from Wolverhampton University Yay! and Aston University Yay! just a minute to convince them that their gadget is the best gadget. At the end of each minute, my hooter will sound. <laughs> And everybody moves on. And when they've made all their pitches, this lot are going to vote on which gadget is the best. It's that simple. Let's get on with it. <laughs> I got a great bit of tech that I was convinced would help me beat Susie. Hiya, Jack White. Slowly put your hand in there. It's got a Peregrine Gaming Glove. The concept is that it replaces the need for a keyboard, or in certain cases a mouse, uh, within complicated games, like things like World of Warcraft. The surface of the Peregrine Glove is wired with a network of stainless steel ribs, connected to the computer by USB. By touching the parts of the glove together, you can control a variety of gaming functions. Up to 30 different moves can be programmed into the glove software. Are you liking it? I'm liking it. It's well designed, isn't it? Yeah. It's got a build quality. You've been lovely. Thank you. See you again. OK, Dave, this is an Adidas trainer. Yep. Very cool, don't you think? Very stylish. It's also a gaming control for augmented reality games. When you're not wearing the Adidas augmented reality trainers, you can use the printed pattern on the shoes to enter an online virtual game. The online software uses your computer's webcam to recognise the position of the pattern. So when you move the trainer, the screen view moves at the same time. So you have to just turn the shoe. You can send your scores to your mates online as well, so it's quite competitive. Oh, yeah. I think you just find one, you got one, you got one, you got one! What's your name, Dave? You can programme the functionality in this glove 30 times. You've got 30 different spells, knife manoeuvres, ways of combating your enemies. You can move your characters around, you can heal yourself, you can look in your inventory by just moving your hand around. What's your name? John. As you can see, I'm, I'm really not that good at the game, but there's, there's two other games as well to play in the little world online of Adidas. There's a skateboarding game and also a music game. Touch so that to the, the outside one, see what happens there? No. You'll see. So rather than pressing the T key with it all key at the same time uh, to make an earthquake spell happen. You essentially, like a wizard, make a shape with your hand and it happens on the screen. So not only have you got a really cool trainer in five different colours, you've also got, you know, a gaming device. Yeah, the way that you connect it via USB is this fantastic magnetic pod which just clips onto the back of it. Yeah. It's designed so that if you walk away from the computer, forget you've got the glove on, it just pulls out from your computer. OK, that's it. Your time is up. We'd finished our speed gadgeting, but which of our gadgets would the students find more attractive and want to see again? It's a cool idea, but it's quite difficult to use. And you kind of get a bit more involved in the game, you can kind of actually squish people a bit. So I think uh, playing with your shoe is a bit sort of an abstract concept, really. 
It was actually pretty simple to use, but um, obviously you still had to use a keyboard and the mouse with it. I think it's a really good idea, but I think it's quite confusing to like come to grips with. Just sitting there with your shoe in front of the webcam, I don't think it's going to work too well. Hey, way to go, speed catching! It was mm. brilliant. You know, I reckon that? it could catch on. Mm. I do, do, honestly. Now, there can be only one winner of this, the Gadget Show's first speed gadging competition. Oh. I have the results here. And I can reveal that this historic first victor of speed gadging with a really quite decisive 19 out of the possible 22 votes is... Jason! Oh! The Peregrine Gaming oh. Club! Oh, well done, Jason. I'm so... I've made history. The first ever winner of speed gadging. Mm, congratulations. Nice well done. That's good. You've you got your fingers crossed. It feels right. Time for the last break in tonight's show now, but after that, the climax of our Hunted Wild Challenge. Can Susie or Otis evade the clutches of Mike Hawk and his mighty train trackers? Yes! And that! Will they be waving the white flag of surrender or the two-fingered salute of victory? Come on! Find out real soon. Come on! Welcome back, and it's time to return to this week's extremely wild challenge. Now, remember, we were all challenged to find the right tech to try to evade capture from highly trained military trackers. If we could stay free and hidden until sunset, we'd be winners. Now, obviously, Jason and I picked the wrong tech because we both got captured pretty quickly. <laughs> yes, Susie and I were still at large, fit and ready for the fight. Fight? What a fight! You've buried yourself in a hole, you scaredy cat! Excuse me, it's a plan that worked, eh, capture boys? Yeah, you see, I was with you until that remark, so now I've got to say, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I'd rather go with Suze's sort of defend the borders approach. Nice one, Suze. Attacking. Ooh, me too. Much more exciting and heroic. I do hope she wins. Oh, yeah. well, thanks a lot, yeah. fellas. Cheers. Yeah. Ooh, sorry, 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 that's very bad form, isn't it? We're not supposed to take sides. Ooh! I do hope she wins. <laughs> Sundown was still three hours away, and already Mike had captured half the team. Oh, Jason. Oh, John, hi, how you doing? That's Mike. Now it looked like it was my turn. I was still relying on my home security tech to keep me hidden. I think I can see something. I can't tell. He said, duck, 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 get down, get down. Fortunately for me, the enemy was headed right in the direction of another bit of home security kit I'd set up, an infrared tripwire. If a burglar breaks the infrared beam, it'll set off a voice recording telling him he's been busted. Better yet, the recording can be personalised. Get down, he's coming! OK, so I can see him moving in the distance. Get down, he's coming! Oh. He's now going to think I'm somewhere else and will hopefully go off. Yeah, he is. He's going off in the wrong direction. <laughs> OK, he's gone. I should be able to pick him up on the other camera now. There he goes, there he goes, there he goes. Good. He's completely missed me and he's headed over that way, so I'm gonna go this way. Meanwhile, my tactic of fighting back was working. I knew the enemy would be looking for another way into my fort. It was just a matter of when. I don't know where he's gone, but he's got to go through a flashbang to get into my perimeter. My tripwire had pulled out the pin, but the sand flash hadn't gone off. It was a dud. But there were still my other traps. If only he would step on one. He's coming up to the paint. Terence, the M80s that are buried in the ground. It's right there. It's right there. Yes! Yes! My trap detonated with three pounds of pressure, spraying the soldier with paint and making him dash for cover. I'd managed to fend him off for a second time. I'd found myself another hiding place and my camouflage was doing a great job, but my cameraman had become a liability. OK, you're going to have to go and make yourself scarce now, OK? Go, off you go. Little did I know that the enemy had a plan. He was equipped with an infrared detector usually used for tracking animals, which picks up the direction of heat signals. I thought if I stayed very still, I would be invisible, but I hadn't counted on this. 
I've got you! He'd found me, but luckily I'd spent a bit of time in the gym preparing for our challenge. And faced with a pursuer who'd spent all day on his feet, I was able to get away and put some distance between us. Now I needed cover. Fast. I was waiting for the enemy to return with backup. Instead, I got reinforcements of my own as Otis stumbled into my hideout. Otis! Yeah? Otis! What? Come here! There's ammo on the barrel! Now, with both of us pinned down in the same place and still nearly an hour till sunset, Mike was confident that he could take the time to regroup for a final triumphant assault on our position. But what they didn't know was that I still had a stockpile of gadget weapons and paintball devices and an extra pair of hands to use them. They're coming, they're coming! We opened our attack with Rat 4 smoke grenades. Chuck it in the middle. These biodegradable paintball gadgets put out 10,000 cubic feet of thick smoke. That delayed Mike's troops for a few seconds as they checked the smoke wasn't cover for anything more sinister. But then I realised that Susie's gadget arsenal consisted of... gadget toys. Oh, what? I picked up the Tommy 20, a rapid-firing sucker gun with a revolving magazine. It's not gonna help me, though. Ah! Ah! While Susie hit him with a Rambo-style belt blaster. If we scored a hit on any of Mike's men, they had to retreat and start their attack again. Susie, I'm out of on the motorized automatic Tommy 20! Oh, they left their band gun! My belt blaster's out as well! So I grabbed the rubber band shooter. And that! Get back! Back! A great bit of kit which rattles off 24 bits of sting-inducing stationery before you have to reload. It's time for the super soaker. The Arctic Blast has a special ice cube hopper to make the water horribly cold. Freeze! Freeze! <laughs> and it shoots 10 metres with deadly precision. Yes! People in the boat don't know how long I can do it for! Oh my own ammo! And now the troops had realised we'd run out of ammo too. With only minutes of daylight left, it looked like the game was over for Team Gadget. But I had one last trick up my sleeve. As well as the smoke grenades, I had thermobaric canisters designed to dazzle and confuse the enemy. Smoke em! We made one last desperate dash for freedom behind a thick screen of smoke and flashes. Oh, just... While Mike and his team searched for us in the fully deserted fort, Building's empty! Prepare attack! Attack! We were legging it as fast as we could. I can't see you! Come on! Come on, Then, as it started to get hard to see where we were going, we realised what that meant. It's technically dark. Looks like sundown to me, Susie. <laughs> She's oh. rubbing it in! Oh. John, oh, yes. one of the days, don't I'm worry. So There'll be plenty more opportunities for you and me to win a challenge later Absolutely. in the series. Ow. See you next Absolutely. video. Right, that's it. I'm going back. It's ah. Ah. Oh. Next time on The Gadget Show, Jason and I are immersing ourselves in the dark and dazzling world of magic. Look at that! We use cutting-edge technology to try and put together our very own magic shows, tricking our audience into thinking we're performing the type of tricks that would make Paul Daniels and Debbie McGee quiver with fear. Also, John enlists the help of film critic James King to find the best all-in-one home cinema setup. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. And Otis travels to Spain to meet a super smart humanoid robot called Reem B. Can I take him home? That's next week, but right now, before the credits roll, remember to enter this week's incredible competition, as well as all the tech you'll see flying across your screens right now. We're also giving away a week's holiday for two, including flights to the Emirates Palace Hotel in Abu Dhabi. You can also win four tickets to this year's Gadget Show Live exhibition at the NEC in Birmingham between the 8th and the 11th of April, including VIP tickets to the Super Theatre and limo to take you to the show and drive you home again afterwards. It's an incredible prize fund worth over £19,000. And to win with the chance of winning it all, you'll need to know the answer to this question. Which movie legend starred in the 1963 film The Great Escape? Was it A, Steve McQueen, B, Stephen Hawking, or C, Steven Spielberg? To enter, call 0904 1616 555 or text A, B or C to 6355 or send your answer, name and contact telephone number on the back of a postcard or a sealed envelope to Gadget Show 4, PO Box 46556, London N10 WW. Calls cost £1.50 from a BT landline. Calls from other networks may vary and from mobiles will cost considerably more. 
Text costs £1.50 plus one message at standard network rate. For rules, go to 5.tv slash win. Lions close at midday on Monday the 1st of March and three days later for postal entries. Goodbye and good luck.